Well, good morning and welcome to Full Potential Fridays. My name is Heidi Denning and for the next 10 minutes, we are going to give you a shot of inspiration and practical strategies to empower you and your team. I am here with an my incredibly talented and smart co-host, Nina Maxson-Bone. Good morning, Nina. What are we going to be focusing on this morning? Good morning, Heidi, and hello, everybody. Today, as you can see from the banner, we're going to be talking about meaningful work and how the future of work is meaningful work. And, you know, this term is bandied around a lot. People talk about it a lot. Mm -hmm. But when we started looking into it, we realised that there was actually no Australian definition of meaningful work and there was no uh, research worldwide anywhere that looked at uh, both kind of the psychological and the sociological perspectives yeah. of meaningful work which I'll get into into a minute but uh, before we get started Heidi I'd love to know from from those listening those out there when you think of meaningful work what does it mean to you what's the one word that jumps out at you that creates meaning in your job I just love to see a mm. list of those one words so, mm. uh, so pop those up let's have a look at those um, but what happened was we look, when we looked into this, we realized that there was this lack of research, Heidi. So we actually decided yeah. to do the research ourselves and to commission some academics to look into it. And so we did do that and we're really excited about that. So we're gonna share some of that in a minute. But before we do, Heidi, um, before I kind of give you some clues, <laughs> if you think about meaningful work, what does mm. meaningful work mean to you? And I'm loving the answers coming through on the screen already as well. So what does meaningful work mean to you, Heidi? Well, for me, I mean, I've always been a great believer that education changes lives. And I suppose for me to feel that I'm being meaningful to anybody, I have to feel like I am educating. That's I have to, I have to see transformation. I have to see behaviour change. It's absolutely crucial for me to feel that way. It's just kind of part of my DNA. And I suppose if I am not doing that, if I don't feel like I'm actually making a difference to somebody's world, then I, I just, I don't feel purposeful. I don't feel like I've, I've got any kind of meaning. And when I've been thinking about this topic, Nina, knowing all the research that you have been doing and, you know, and, and thinking about, you know, how that has changed for me over the years. And I'd love to know if the people who are listening, if you think about the very first job that you had, what did that mean for you then? Did you, no, no, I think the better question is, did you feel like the very first job that you had was meaningful? Uh, certainly for me, I don't think it was, <laughs> but I'd love just a yes or a no in the comments. Was your very first job that you ever had meaningful to you? And uh, we'd love to see that. And I love that. Yeah, I love these comments that are coming through about what meaningful work means to everyone, adding value and purpose, enjoyment, satisfying. Thank you, everybody. That's wonderful. I. The other part of that for me is that what's changed, I suppose, from when I first started doing what I was doing, which, you know, has been educating from horrible teenage girls in high schools to small children on Pacific Islands through to C-suite uh, executives in billion dollar companies, is that for it to be meaningful, it must have this behaviour change for everyone around, um, for in the whole team, because it takes from the top up, the bottom top down and bottom up for there to be meaning for everybody. But again, I loving all these. Um, oh, it was a milk run as an eight year, eight year old. And I love that. Oh, you don't find that by giving people nourishment was meaningful. That's really interesting. I'm sure it really was. Um, and anyway, Nina, that is how um, meaningful work, what, what meaningful work means for me. And do you know what, Heidi, what you've tapped into there and what everyone else on the, in the comments have tapped into is this key point that actually meaningful work can mean different things to different people yeah, and, yeah. and can mean different things over time as well. You know, my mm. first job was babysitting and I loved it. I loved being around. Yeah. I'm, I loved the idea that I could get paid to do my homework. For me at the time, that was genius. I thought that was the best thing ever. So for yeah. it had meaning. And, and this is where this idea that meaningful work, this is why there hasn't been the research really is because it's, such a kind of broad concept that can mean different. Yes, yes. So when yeah. we did research, what we looked into was both the psychological and the sociological perspectives. And this is a world first because most research in the world focuses on the psychological. You'd be, comp you'd be um, kind of uh, up with that in that you'd understand what we mean when I explain it. So the psychological is things like how well do your personality traits suit the job? You know, if I'm an introvert, yeah. 
I'm probably not going to work in the Bowman office, which is loud and noisy. You know, <laughs> if, I'm a, if I'm an extrovert, I probably don't want to be a librarian. You know, how yeah. much the psychological side of fit things, and that can often apply to your individual, the job, and some level to the organisational as well. But the sociolog sociological perspective, which is less been less studied and certainly never been studied in an integrated approach until we did it is how much the cultural, the society that you're sort of, that you're in and you're influenced by, how much does that influence whether work is meaningful to your not? Yeah. And that's yeah. a really important thing. So if, let's explain it this way. If, for example, we happen to live in a society that really values stay-at-home mums, if I was then a stay-at-home mum, I would find that work really meaningful. I, I derive real meaning from that because the culture I live in tells me that that's an important job. But yeah. conversely, if I'm a man doing exactly the same mm -hmm. job in exactly the same society, I actually might feel really bad about that. That might impact my, le my levels of self-esteem. So that mm -hmm. sociological perspective can actually have a much bigger impact than people realise. So I'd love to hear from you, Heidi, I guess whether you can think of an example with yourself or with others where, where that sociological impact, say that slowly, sociological impact <laughs> comes into play. I'm not going to try to say that word because I have a lisp. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, look, I think, I mean, what we've all seen over the last 12 months, um, when we look at the different perspective, everybody has put value on our teachers, for example, you know, people just send their kids off to school and that was, you know, done. But now, you know, since everyone was having to homeschool, I think there was a lot greater value put on education and what teachers actually had to do in a day. And I, I think that's also happened for our healthcare workers who have been on the front line, you know, certainly here in Australia, but of course, even more overseas that they've had to turn up every day. Uh, is, is that the kind of thing you're talking about, Nina? Absolutely. Yeah, spot on, spot on. And the fact that we've actually, the job hasn't changed. But society has changed its view of the job. Yeah. And, you know, I think, I mean, that has been one of the wonderful things that we have seen come out of these last 12 months, that our perspective on those particular professions, the, seeing the value, the meaning that they give is has just gone up quite a lot. And I can't help but think of um, the wonderful book that Annabelle Crabb has written um, called The Wife Drought. And you know, she looks at these kind of the different approaches that men and women have um, about negotiating. And, you know, that it's not that the either gender is really good at negotiating. It's just that we are conditioned to negotiate what our society tells us it's okay to negotiate. And men seem to be far better at negotiating salary and women are far better at negotiating uh, flexibility. So, I, you know, this happens across multiple industries and roles that we have. And, I, you know, I think that's a, one of the great examples, would you agree, Nina, of where yeah. that plays out? And if you haven't read that book, I would recommend, I love that book. Yeah. I think it's such a great book. So I guess that takes us quite nicely to our third point, um, Heidi. And, and before I get into that, though, I just, I'd love to hear from the audience now with some understanding of the sociological impact or the, let's call it the mm. cultural impact because it's easier to say um uh, if there's yeah. anyone that's got comments on uh you know do they do they think that their job has been influenced by culture or society so mm. you know and, and what was it is it that they were in a gambling business that you know, didn't suit or they did they work for a alcohol company when they don't drink alcohol whatever it might be what has it yeah, so I know that's a bit of an airy fairy question, but just would love to know if anyone's got any little uh, tidbits there because it's great to see. I think the, the, the third point and really the crux of all this, Heidi, is that it's really important to take time to know what meaningful work is for you because it can yeah. change. There are four factors, as I said, the job, the organisation, the individual and the, the society and culture. And different yeah. elements of those factors can be quite different for you and quite different over time. We yeah. found the research 98 percent of people believe that meaningful work is important and 71 percent believe it's more important now than it was five years ago yet we had no definition and no understanding of how to measure it or you know to work for it and, and also yeah. kind of what was scary was that at an organizational level only 38 percent of organizations were even thinking about the ways in which they're their work was meaningful when they were doing job design. So there's a real gap there to be yeah. bridged. And with all the candidates we speak to, we often see that's actually where the opportunity 
to find work and then stay in work and really enjoy your work and stay there for a long time that mm-hmm. makes the difference to how well you how engaged you are how well you perform mm-hmm. so you need to spend time on it we need schools to stay open because sociologically women are the ones who are working from home losing visibility absolutely yeah. you Thank know you, interesting. Yeah. Working as a lawyer because we've got high marks, profession to perform at high level, even if it's not what your passion is, absolutely. Ah, you know, that's a yeah. great sociological example where you do a role because you think it's, you know, review it's well regarded by society, but it's not yes. what you as a, what an individual want to do. So this is why yeah. it's to think about these. If this has sparked something in you, we have a website that has our, our research and um it and also will tell you when the tool becomes available because we will be releasing a tool so people can do their own measurements. It's not quite ready yet, but a very yeah. simple website, meaningfulwork.com.au. So if you want to find out more, go there. But um, Heidi, I guess having listened to this, my last question for you, has this changed your perspective on meaningful work? Has it sparked anything in you? Well, those the, those results of your research, uh, I mean, those percentages are really compelling, Nina. And I think what that has sparked for me is that, you know, people don't people don't just turn up for work just for a paycheck anymore. We, as a society, well, I suppose in the society that we're all in and our listeners are all in, we want more from that. We want to come to work every day. We want to feel like that we're making a difference. We want to feel that there is meaning to what we are doing. So, as an organize as organisations, to me, I just see that they really have to design these job roles and teams where people can turn up every day and feel like they are bringing meaning to their roles and feel like they are actually on point with the purposes and the values that they have. And I believe that this is far more important now than it has ever been because of what has gone on over the last 12 months. We know that life can change in a heartbeat. And if we can't turn up every day and bring meaning to what we do when we spend over 90,000 hours of our lives at work, we need to bring meaning to it. So, yeah, that's how I see that playing out, Nina. Couldn't agree more. And thank you so much. And I've loved the engagement from everybody. It's been a really yeah. um, fabulous uh, Friday uh, live this morning with some great comments and some great input. And I'd, I'd love to see those comments keep coming in. I know often people watch this um, after the actual live. So, um, so it'd be really interesting to see that. So, Heidi, that is us for this week. That is Meaningful yeah. Work in a nutshell. I didn't know it I could do it. Quite quickly. <laughs> in a nutshell. And um, I've really enjoyed being with you. We're back again in two weeks, I believe, uh, for yeah. another potential Friday. What's our topic for the next one, Heidi? Yeah, in two weeks we're coming back and we're talking about how great leaders actually bounce forward not backwards and it's a you know it's something that I'm very passionate about I know we've had lots of discussions about it Nina and um, I look forward to that but in the meantime if you would like to understand whether your teams are working to their fullest potential we'd love you to go on to that link there and it's a free very short online scorecard where you will get a measurement on how um, wh- where you are at, where your team is at, working to the, if they're working to their fullest potential. But in the meantime, happy Friday. We look forward to seeing you in two weeks. And yeah, have a great weekend. Bye. Bye.